Should I be met about ventricular bigeminy? Is it an enemy or more like a frenemy? I've always thought it happened with an unhappy heart, like post arrest or post VT or post myocardial infarct. So I looked around and I found that many videos shoehorn bigeminy into benign ventricular ectopics, but I really thought it was a different topic. So I did a deeper dive and here we are, but I've got to go to work soon. So this is what I know so far. I got most of my information from the 2017 American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology and the Heart Rhythm Society guideline for the management of patients with ventricular arrhythmias and the prevention of sudden cardiac death. It's a decent easy read and I'll put the link below. I do have issue with the etymology of bigeminy, which means two twins. But ventricular bigeminy is when you have a normal QRS followed by a ventricular ectopic, which is only one set of twins, and at best they're non-identical twins, like in the 1988 movie Twins. Like most things in medicine, the assessment of ventricular bigeminy requires a decent history and examination. PVCs, or premature ventricular complexes, are common and increase in frequency with age. Shocker alert! In the general population, frequent PVCs, which are defined as the presence of at least one PVC on a 12-lead ECG, or over 30 PVCs per hour, are associated with increased cardiovascular risk and increased mortality. This is from a meta-analysis of observational studies in which attempts were made to exclude high-risk subjects, such as those with histories of cardiovascular disease, but they did not test participants for underlying structural heart disease. So although this is a bit of a shocker when I think of the number of ECGs I sign off with PVCs, further study is needed to determine the role of confounding and underlying structural heart disease. So you've got a patient with bigeminy on their ECG, and this is the chat. From the history, presenting complaint and history of presenting complaint. Check for your cardinal cardiovascular symptoms. They might point you to a clue for underlying arrhythmia, or dysrhythmia for the purists, or underlying structural heart disease. Syncope will usually be self-evident, but check if it occurred during exercise. I always forget to do that. Are there any cardiovascular risk factors? Is the patient at risk of having disturbed electrolytes? Think about checking potassium, magnesium and calcium. Was there a highly stressful or emotional precipitating factor to cause a huge catecholamine surge? Has there been cocaine or other stimulant use? Has the patient been to an espresso masterclass like I did the other day and sunk about nine espressos? Not recommended. Is the patient thyrotoxic? Family history and social history. Any unexplained cardiac death or cardiac arrest in a first degree relative? Has anyone needed a pacemaker? Try and keep a mental list of the seven sudden cardiac death ECG abnormalities like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and long QT syndrome. Is your patient a smoker? Do they drink alcohol to excess? Does their job make them more likely to indulge in illicit drugs? Drug history. Check for drugs and drug-drug interactions that can prolong your QT interval and thus increase your risk of torsade. Remember that some medications can also induce Brigada type 1 pattern and VF. I say remember, but I didn't actually know that. The Credible, Credible Meds app is free to use and is incredibly useful. Brigadadrugs.org is a great website to learn more about culprit medications. Next, is your patient on digoxin and is digitoxic? Is the patient taking any over-the-counter meds, supplements, anabolic steroids? Examination. This is the bit where you need a keen eye and ear. Listen for murmurs. Really listen. Is the patient known to have mitral valve prolapse and will hopefully have a satisfying mid-systolic click? Feel for a slow rising pulse of the carotid if you think you can hear the ejection systolic murmur of aortic stenosis. Right, let's bring it back to the beginning. Should I be met about ventricular bigeminy? Well, before I looked into this, I would see an ECG with ventricular bigeminy and I was never sure what it meant, except for an unhappy heart. That was the general vibe I got from people I talked to as well, but I still hung on to the patient and spoke to cardiology about them, usually as like a, is this okay, type question. So in answer to the original question, no, I should not be met about ventricular bigeminy. So in summary, ventricular bigeminy in the ED could be representative of underlying structural heart disease. A decent history and examination to look for the underlying cause will go a long way to help. And I would still have a low threshold in my place of work to phone cardiology for advice, even if it's just to say, does this sound like a reasonable plan or for follow-up purposes?